Sunan Abu Daud, The Book of the Traveler's Prayers Chapter on the Prayer of the Traveler Aisha narrated, Initially, the prayer had been made obligatory in units of two rakahs only during residence and travel. So the prayer for the traveler was approved and remained as two, and the prayer during residence was increased. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Ya'la bin Umayyah said, I asked Umar bin al-Khattab, do you see that people are shortening the prayer? This, despite the fact that Allah, the mighty and sublime, said, If you fear that those who disbelieve will put you in trial. Quran, Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 101. And this fear has now gone in our days. He replied, I also wondered about what you are wondering about, and I mentioned this to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, This is a charity that Allah has given to you, so accept his charity. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments 1. Shortening, kasr, a prayer during journeys, is sunnah. 2. Authentic hadiths are explanations of the Qur'an. Another chain with similar narration as number 1199 for this hadith. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Chapter on When Should the Traveler Shorten the Prayer? It was reported from Shoba from Yahya bin Yazid al-Hunay, that he said, I asked Anas bin Malik regarding the shortening of the prayer. He replied, When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, traveled for a distance of three miles, or three farsaks, Shoba was not sure he would pray two rakahs. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote regarding three farsaks. They say a farsak is about three miles, amyal. As for mile, Meal, they say it is the distance where one's sight ends or the limit that one can see a person on a level surface of land and not recognize whether it is a male or a female or whether they are coming or going. And some of the present-day scholars say it is 1,680 meters. It was reported from Muhammad bin al-Munkadir and Ibrahim bin Maysara that they heard Anas bin Malik saying, I prayed Zuhr with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, for rakas while we were in al Madina, and then Asr as Turakas at Dhul Hulafa. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments A prayer shall be shortened only after a person has set out on a journey and is beyond the city limits. Dhul Hulafa is about 10 kilometers from al Madina and is the first stop on the way to Mecca. Chapter on the Adhan during travel Uqba bin Ahmed narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, your Lord, the mighty and sublime, is amazed and pleased when a shepherd who is tending his sheep and is standing at a protruding rock at the top of a mountain calls the adhan for the prayer and then prays. Allah says, Look at this servant of mine. He calls the adhan and performs the prayer. He fears me. So I have forgiven this servant of mine and admitted him to paradise. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on a Traveler Praying While He Is Unsure of the Time It was reported from Mishaj bin Musa who said, I asked Anas bin Malik, Narrate to us something that you heard from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So he said, When we used to be with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on a journey, we would say to ourselves, Has the sun begun its descent or not? And he, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would pray Zohar and continue traveling. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments For a prayer to be valid, some important conditions have to be met. Knowing the correct timing of prayer, that is, when the time of a prayer is due, is one of those conditions. Shuba narrated, Hamzatul Aidi. A man from Banu Dabba narrated to me, he said, I heard Anas bin Malik saying, Whenever the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, camped, he would not leave until he had prayed Zuhr. A man asked Anas, even if it was midday? He replied, even if it was midday. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments It does not mean that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, performed Zohar exactly at midday, noon, before the sun had crossed the meridian. Rather, it means that he said his prayer immediately after the sun had crossed the meridian and then resumed his journey. 
It is quite obvious because the Zohar prayer time begins only after the sun had crossed the meridian. Chapter on Combining Between Two Prayers It was reported from Malik from Abu Az-Zabar, Al-Makki from Abu At-Tufal, Amir bin Wathila, that Mu'adh bin Jabal informed them that they went out with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, for the battle of Tabuk. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would combine between Zohar and Asr, and between Maghrib and Isha. One day he delayed the prayer, then came out and prayed Zohar and Asr together, then returned to his tent, then came out and prayed Maghrib and Isha together. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments A traveler may combine his prayers both while camping and moving. Performing congregational prayers while traveling is also sunnah. Nafia reported that Ibn Umar was informed of the death of Safiya while he was in Mecca. He traveled until the sun set and the stars appeared. He said, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was in a hurry during his journey, he would combine between these, meaning Maghrib and Isha, two prayers and would continue traveling until the twilight disappeared. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was reported from Hisham bin Sa'ad, from Abu Az-Zubair, from Abu At-Tufel, from Wa'ad bin Jabal, that during the expedition of Tabuk, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would combine between Zohar and Asr if the sun had started its descent before he started traveling. And if he traveled before the sun had started its descent, he would delay Zohar until he camped at the time of Asr, and he would do the same for Maghrib. If the sun had set before he traveled, he would combine between Maghrib and Isha, and if he traveled before the sun disappeared, he would delay Maghrib until he camped at the time of Isha. Then he would combine between them. Abu Daud said, Hisham bin Urwa reported it from Hussein bin Abdullah from Qurab, from Ibn Abbas, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, similar to the narration of Al-Mufaddal and Al-Layth. Number 1207. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments 1. Combining prayers during journeys is established in the sunnah. 2. Prayers may be combined in two ways. One way is to perform zuhur and asr prayers at zuhur time, and then maghrib and isha prayers at maghrib time. The other way is to perform zuhur and asr prayers at asr time, then maghrib and isha prayers at isha time. It was reported from Suleiman bin Abi Yahya, from Ibn Umar, that he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, never combined between Maghrib and Isha while he was traveling except once. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Abu Daud said, This was related from Ayyub from Nafir from Ibn Umar as a mokuf narration of Ibn Umar, that he did not see Ibn Umar combining between the two of them ever except that one night, meaning the night he was informed of the death of Safiya. It has been related in a narration from Mahul from Nafir that he saw Ibn Umar do that once or twice. It was reported from Malik, from Abu Az-Zubair al-Makki, from Sayyid bin Jubair, from Abdullah bin Abbas that he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prayed Zuhur and Asr combined, and Maghrib and Isha combined, while he was neither traveling nor in a state of fear. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Malik said, I believe this occurred when it rained. Abu Daud said, Hamad bin Salama reported the same from Abu Az-Zubair, and Qurra bin Khalid reported it from Abu Az-Zubair. He said, This happened during our travels to Tabuk. Habib bin Abi Thabit reported Sayyid bin Jubair from Ibn Abbas that he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, once combined between Zuhur and Asr and between Maghrib and Isha. While we were in al Madina, without any cause for fear nor due to rain. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Ibn Abbas was asked, why did he do that? He replied, he wished not to inconvenience his nation. It was reported from Muhammad bin Fadal, from his father from Nafia, and Abdullah bin Vakid, that the Muaddin of Ibn Umar said to Ibn Umar while they were traveling, the prayer. He said, proceed, proceed. He continued until the twilight was about to disappear, then he camped and prayed Maghrib. He then waited until the redness disappeared and then prayed Isha. Then he said, when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was in a hurry, he would do as I just did. 
and he would travel three days of normal travel distance on that one day and night. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Daud said Ibn Jabir reported it from Nafi'a similarly with his chain. Comments, meaning in a hurry while on a journey. Another chain from Isa from Ibn Jabir with this meaning, similar to number 1212. He said, so when the twilight was about to disappear, he camped and combined them. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. It was reported from Jabir bin Zad from Ibn Abbas that he said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, once led us in prayer in al Madina. He prayed eight and then seven, Zuhar and Asr and then Maghrib and Isha. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Sulaiman and Musaddad did not say with us. Abu Daud said, Salih, the freed slave of At-Tawama, reported it from Ibn Abbas, but he said, and it was not raining. Footnote, that is, the author also heard this narration from Amr bin Aun, and here he quoted his wording, but mentioned the difference in their narrations. Comments, the permission is valid only for some very pressing and urgent need, according to companions and learned scholars. They have cautioned people not to fall into a habit of it or make it a settled practice. It was reported from Abu Az-Zubair from Jabir that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was once in Mecca when the sun set, and he combined between them Maghrib and Isha when he reached Sarf. This hadith is graded daif or weak. It was reported from Hisham bin Sa'ad that he said between them, meaning between Mecca and Sarf, is 10 miles. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abdullah bin Dinar said, I was once traveling with Abdullah bin Umar when we saw that night had fallen. We said the prayer. But he continued traveling until the twilight had disappeared and the stars could be seen. He then dismounted and prayed both of them together. Then he said, I saw that when the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was in a hurry during his travels. He would pray in such a manner as I have prayed. He would combine them after night fell. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said, Asim bin Muhammad reported it from his brother from Salim, and Ibn Abi Najih reported it from Ismail ibn Abdurrahman bin Dhuweb, that the combining between them reported from Ibn Umar was after the twilight disappeared. Comments These hadiths inform us that Ibn Umar performed the true prayers together after the evening twilight had faded and disappeared. It was reported from Al-Mufaddal, from Uqal, from Ibn Shihab, from Anas bin Malik, who said, If the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, started to travel before the sun began its descent, after the zenith, he would delay Zuhur until Asr time, then he would dismount and join between them. And if the sun had started its descent before he started to travel, he would pray Zuhur and then travel. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said Mufaddal was a judge in Egypt and his supplications would be answered, and he is Ibn Fadala. Another chain for number 1218. It was narrated by Jabir bin Ismail from Uqal with this narration, with this chain. He said, and he would delay Maghrib until the twilight had disappeared. Then he would join it with Isha. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Mu'adh bin Jabal narrated, during the expedition of Tabuk, if the Prophet, peace be upon him, started to travel before the sun began its descent, he would delay Zuhur and would combine it with Asr and pray them together. And if he started to travel after the sun began its descent, he prayed Zuhur and Asr together, then travel. And if he traveled before sunset, he would delay Maghrib until he prayed it with Isha. And if he traveled after Maghrib, he would pray Isha early and combine it with Maghrib. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. Abu Daud said, No one but Qutayba alone reported this hadith. Chapter on Shortening the Recitation During Travel Al-Bara' narrated, We once went with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on one of his travels, and he led us in Isha. He recited, By the fig and the olive, Qur'an, Surah At-Teen, Chapter 95, in one of the Rakas. 
This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments A prayer leader should take into consideration the circumstances and conditions of those whom he is leading in prayer. While praying during a journey, it is recommended that the recitation not be long. Chapter on the Voluntary Prayers During Travel Al-Bara bin Azib al-Ansari narrated, I accompanied the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on eighteen of his travels. I never once saw him leave the Turakas after the sun began its descent before Zuhr. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Hafs bin Asim bin Umar bin al-Khattab narrated, I accompanied Ibn Umar in one of his journeys. He led us in a Turaka prayer, then turned around and saw people standing in prayer. He asked, What are these people doing? I said, They are praying voluntary prayers. He said, If I were to pray the voluntary prayers, I would have completed my obligatory prayer. O oh, nephew, I accompanied the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, during his travels, and he never prayed more than two rakahs while traveling until Allah took his soul. And I accompanied Abu Bakr during his travels, and he never prayed more than two rakahs until Allah took his soul. And I accompanied Umar during his travels, and he never prayed more than two rakahs until Allah, the mighty and sublime, took his soul. And I accompanied Uthman during his travels, and he never prayed more than two rakahs until Allah took his soul. And Allah has said, Indeed, you have in the Messenger of Allah an excellent example. Qur'an, Surah Al-Ahzab, Chapter 33, Verse 21 This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Chapter on Praying Voluntary Prayers and Vithir While Riding a Mount It was reported from Salim, from his father, Ibn Umar, who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would pray voluntary prayers while riding on his camel, regardless of the direction it was facing, and he would also pray vitr on it, but he would not pray the obligatory prayers on it. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. Anas bin Malik narrated, If the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, wanted to pray voluntary prayers while he was traveling, he would turn his camel towards the Qibla, say the takbir, then pray in the direction the caravan traveled. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. It was reported from Abu al-Hubab Sayyid bin Yasar from Abdullah bin Umar that he said, I saw the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, praying on his donkey while he was headed in the direction of Khaybar. This hadith is graded Sahih or authentic. Comments It is prohibited to eat the flesh of a domestic donkey, but one may pray on its back. It was reported from Abu Az-Zubair from Jabir who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent me on some errand, until he said, So I returned to him while he was praying on his camel, facing east, and his prostration was lower than his ruku. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. Chapter on Praying Obligatory Prayers on a Mount if There is an Excuse Muhammad bin Shoaib reported from an numan bin Al-Mundir from Ata bin Abi Rabah that he asked Aisha, Was a concession given to women allowing them to pray on their mounts? She replied, They were not given this concession, whether in severe circumstances or otherwise. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Muhammad said, This is with regards to the obligatory prayers. Chapter on When Should the Traveler Stop Shortening the Prayer? It was reported from Ali bin Zaid, from Abu Nadra, from Imran bin Hussein, that he said, I participated in military expeditions with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and took part in the conquest of Mecca. He, peace be upon him, stayed there eighteen nights, praying only two rakahs, and he would say, O people of the city, pray four rakahs, for we are people who are traveling. This hadith is graded daif or weak. It was reported from Asim from Ikrama from Ibn Abbas that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stayed seventeen days in Mecca, and he shortened the prayers. Ibn Abbas said, So whoever stays seventeen days should shorten, and whoever stays longer than that should pray the complete prayer. This hadith is graded sahi or authentic. Abu Daud said, Abad bin Mansur narrated it from Ikrama from Ibn Abbas. He stayed 19. Azuri reported from Ubaidullah bin Abdullah from Ibn Abbas that he said, 
During the year of the conquest of Mecca, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stayed fifteen days in Mecca, shortening the prayer. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. Abu Daud said, Abda bin Suleiman reported this hadith as did Ahmed bin Khalid al-Wahbi and Salma bin al-Fadl from Ibn Ishaq, and none of them said in it from Ibn Abbas. It was reported from Sharik, from Ibn al-Ashbahani, from Ikrama, from Ibn Abbas, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stayed in Mecca seventeen days, praying to Rakas. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. It was reported from Yahya bin Abi Ishaq from Anas bin Malik who said, We went on a journey with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, from al Madina to Mecca. He, peace be upon him, continued to pray to Rakas until we returned to al Madina. So we, the sub-narrator said, Did you stay there in Mecca for some time? He, Anas bin Malik, replied, We stayed for ten days. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. Omar bin Ali bin Abi Talib narrated, When Ali used to travel, he would travel after sunset until it was almost dark. Then he would camp and pray Maghrib. He would then call for his dinner, eat, and then pray Isha, and continue on the journey. He would say, This is what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, used to do. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. I heard Abu Daud saying Osama bin Zaid reported from Hafs bin Ubaidullah meaning Ibn Anas bin Malik, that Anas would combine between them when the twilight disappeared, and he would say, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would do that. And a narration of Azuri from Anas, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, is also similar. Footnote regarding I heard, that is, Abu Ali al-Lu'i, one of those that heard this text from the author. Chapter on If he encamps in enemy territory, he shortens the prayer. Jabir bin Abdullah narrated, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was encamped at the book for twenty days, shortening the prayer. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. Abu Daud, it was narrated in mursal form by others aside from Ma'mar without narrating a connected chain. Chapter on the Prayer of Fear, Salat al Khauf. Those who held the view that the Imam should lead them while they are in two rows and that they should all say the takbir with him, then they all follow him in raku, then the imam and those in the first row should prostrate, while the second row should remain standing, guarding them. Then, when the imam and the first row stand up, those in the second row should prostrate, then the first row should exchange positions with the second row, such that they retreat to where the second row was, and the second row should move forward to the position of the first row. Then all of them should follow the imam into raku, then the imam should prostrate along with the first row while the second row stands guard. Then when the imam sits down along with the first row, the second row should prostrate, then they should all sit down together and say the taslim together. Abu Daud said, This is the opinion of Sufyan. Abu Ayash az-Zurki narrated, We were with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, at Usfan, while the leader of the pagans was Khalid bin al-Walid. We prayed Zohar, and the pagans said, We had been given a time in which the Muslims were heedless. We had been given a time in which they were inattentive. If only we had attacked them while they were praying. So the verse permitting the shortening of the prayer was revealed between Zohar and Asr. Therefore, when the time for Asr came, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stood facing the Qibla while the pagans were facing us. One row stood behind the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and another row stood behind the first row. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went into Raku, and all of them also went into Raku. Then he went into prostration, and the row that was behind him also went into prostration, while the others stood guard over them. After these ones, the first row, had prostrated twice and stood up, those behind them then prostrated, then the row that was behind him retreated to the position of the other row, and the rear row moved forward until they were in the position of the first row. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went into Raku, and they all went into Raku with him. Then he went into prostration, and the row behind him also went into prostration, while the others stood guard over them. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sat down with the row that was behind him, the others then prostrated. Then they all sat down together. 
He then said the taslim with all of them. He prayed in this manner at Usfan, and he also prayed in this manner on the day of Banu Sulam. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said, Ayyub and Hisham reported it from Abu Az-Zabar from Jabir with this meaning from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And similarly, Daud bin Hussain reported it from Ikrama from Ibn Abbas, and Abdul Malik also reported like that from Ata from Jabir, and also Katada from Al Hassan from Hitan from Abu Musa that he did it. And similarly, Ikrama bin Khalid reported it from Mujahid from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And like that, Hisham bin Urwa from his father, from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And this is the view of Sufyan Athari. Chapter on whoever said that one row should stand with the imam and another row face the enemy. Then the imam should lead those behind him for one rakah, then stand up until those that are with him pray another rakah, then leave and face the enemy while the other group comes in their place. Then he leads them in prayer for one rakah, then he remains sitting while they complete another rakah by themselves, then he says the taslim for all of them. Comments? Obligatory prayer is a duty which shall not be waived even in times of war. It was reported from Abdurrahman bin Al-Qasim, from his father from Saleh bin Khawat, from Sahel bin Abi Hathma, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, once led his companions in the prayer of fear. He made them stand behind him in two rows, and then led those that were behind him for one rakah. Then he stood up and remained standing until those that were behind him prayed another rakah. Then they changed positions with those who were behind him. The second row stepped forward, while those who were ahead of them, the first row, retreated back. The Prophet, peace be upon him, led them for one rakah. He then sat until those who had not caught the first rakah completed another rakah. Then he said the taslim. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. Chapter on whoever said he prays one rakah. And he should remain standing while the first row completes the other rakah and says the taslim. Then they leave such that they face the enemy, and so they, the first row, differ with the imam in the taslim. It was reported from Malik, from Yazid bin Roman, from Saleh bin Khawat, who narrated from someone who had prayed the prayer of fear with the Messenger of Allah on the day of ar that one group stood with him while the other group faced the enemy. So he led those that were with him in one rakah and remained standing while they completed the prayer by themselves, then left and faced the enemy. The other group then came and he led them in the one rakah that was left of his prayer, then remained sitting while they completed the prayer by themselves. Then he said the taslim with them. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. Malik said the narration of Yazid bin Roman is the most beloved narration to me. It was reported from Yahya bin Said, from Al Qasim bin Muhammad, from Saleh bin Khawat al Ansari that Sahel bin Abi Hathma al Ansari narrated to him about the prayer of fear. The Imam should stand with a group of his followers while another group faces the enemy. The Imam should then lead those behind him in the Raku and prostration, then stand up. Once he stands up, he should remain standing while they, the first group, complete by themselves the remaining rakah. Then they should say that the salim and leave while the imam remains standing and go to face the enemy. After this, the other group, the one that has not prayed yet, should say the takbir behind the imam, and he, the imam, should lead them in the raku and prostration, then say the taslim. They should then stand up and complete the remaining rakah, then say the taslim. This hadith is graded as sahih. Or authentic. Abu Daud said, As for the narration of Yahya bin Said from Al Qasim, it is similar to the narration of Yazid bin Roman, except that he differs with him regarding the Taslim. And Ubadullah reported similar to the narration of Yahya bin Said, he said, He said, and he remains standing. Chapter on Whoever said that they say the Takbir together. Even if their backs are towards the Qibla, then he should lead those with him for one rakah, then they should go to the position of their companions and the others should take their place. The second group should pray one rakah by themselves, then the imam should lead them in one rakah, then the group that is facing the enemy should return and pray another rakah by themselves while the imam is still sitting.
then he should say the taslim for all of them. Abu al-Aswad narrated that he heard Urwa bin Az-Zubair narrate that Marwan bin al-Hakam asked Abu Huraira, Did you pray the prayer of fear with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him? Abu Huraira replied, Yes. Marwan said, When? Abu Huraira said, The year of the Battle of Najd. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stood up for the Asr prayer, and a group stood with him while another group was facing the enemy. Their backs were towards the Qibla. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said takbir, and everyone said takbir as well, those that were behind him and those that were facing the enemy. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went into the first raku, and those that were with him also did so. Then he went into prostration, and those that were with him followed. During this time, the other group was standing facing the enemy. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stood up, and those that were behind him also stood up and went to face the enemy, while the group that was initially facing the enemy came and performed one raku and prostration. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, remained standing as he was while they did this. Then they stood up, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went into the second raku, and they also went into raku. Then he prostrated, and they also prostrated. Then the group that was facing the enemy came and performed one raku and prostrated while the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was sitting with those who were with him. It was then time for the taslim, so the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said the taslim, and all those that were with him also said the taslim. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prayed two rakahs, and everyone else from the two groups prayed one rakah. This hadith is graded as hasan, or good. Another chain from Urwa bin Az-Zubair from Abu Huraira who said, We once went on an expedition with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, to Najd. When we reached that Arika at Nakhl, we met a group from the tribe of Ghatafan, and he narrated a similar narration in meaning as in number 1240, except that in this one, after he said, So when he led those that were with him in Raku and prostrated, he added, When they stood up, they retreated backwards until they reached the place of their companions. And in this version, he did not mention the fact that their backs were facing the Qibla. This hadith is graded Hassan, or good. Aisha also narrated this incident as follows. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that the Takbir and those that were lined behind him also said it. Then he went into Raku, and they all went into Raku. Then he prostrated, and they all prostrated. Then he came up from the prostration, and they did the same. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, remained sitting while they completed the second prostration by themselves. They then stood up, and retraced their steps, walking backwards, until they stood behind where they had prayed. The second group then came up, and they stood in line and said the takbir. They then completed the raku by themselves, then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, prostrated, and they prostrated with him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, then stood up, and they prostrated the second prostration by themselves. Then both the groups stood and prayed with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. He went into Raku, and they also went into Raku. Then he prostrated, and they also prostrated. He then prostrated a second time, and they also prostrated, swiftly, as fast as possible, trying their utmost to hurry it up. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that the Slim, and they also said that the Slim. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, stood up, and the people had prayed with him the entire prayer. This hadith is graded as Hassan, or good. Chapter on whoever said that the Imam should lead every group in one rakah, then say that the Slim and every group should stand up and pray one rakah by themselves. It was reported from Salim, from Ibn Umar, that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, led one group in prayer while the other group was facing the enemy. Then the first group went away and stood in there, the second group's place, while they, the second group, prayed one rakah with him. Then he said that the Slim to them, then each group stood up and completed their respective rakah. This hadith is graded as sahih, or authentic. Abu Daud said Nafi and Khalid bin Ma'dan reported like that from Ibn Umar from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And similar was said by Masruq and Yusuf bin Mihran from Ibn Abbas. And similar was reported by Yunus from Al-Hassan from Abu Musa that he would do that. Comments? In this mode of praying, the imam becomes like a guardian of the fighters praying behind him by giving them time enough to complete their prayer. 
Chapter on whoever said that the imam should lead each of the two groups in one rakat, then say that the slim, then those that are behind him should stand up and complete another rakat, then the other group should take this group's place and pray one rakat. It was reported from Ibn Fudal that Khusaf narrated to them from Abu Ubeda from Abdullah bin Masood who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, once led us in the prayer of fear. One group stood in a row behind the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and another group stood facing the enemy. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, led them, the row behind him in one rakah, then the other group came and stood in their place, while the first group went to face the enemy. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, led them in one rakah, and said that the slain. So they, the row praying behind him, stood up and completed one rakah by themselves, said that the slim, then went and stood in place of the other group facing the enemy. The other group then returned to their places and completed a rakah and said that the slim. This hadith is graded daif or weak. Another chain from Sharik from Khosef with his chain and similar meaning as number 1244. He said, so the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, said the takbir, and both groups also said the takbir. This hadith is graded as daif or weak. Abu Daud said, a thari reported this from Khusaf, and Abdurrahman bin Samora also prayed in this manner, except that the group that he led for one rakah said that the slim and went to the place where their companions, the other group, were standing. While they, the other group, came and prayed one rakah, then they returned to the place of their companions and prayed one rakah by themselves. Abu Daud said, Muslim bin Ibrahim narrated that to us. He said, Abdul Samad bin Habib narrated to us. My father informed me that they were on an expedition with Abdurrahman bin Samura to Kabul, and he led them in the prayer of fear. Chapter on those who said that the Imam should lead each group for one rakah and then they should not complete the second rakah. Thalaba bin Zahdam said, We were with Sa'id bin Al-As in Tabaristan. He stood up and said, Who among you has prayed the prayer of fear with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him? Hudafa said, I have. So he led this group in one rakah and that group in one rakah and they did not complete the second rakah. This hadith is graded sahih. Or authentic. Abu Daud said, similar to this was reported by Ubadullah bin Abdullah and Mujahid from Ibn Abbas from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And also Abdullah bin Shakik from Abu Huraira from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And also Yazid al-Fakir and Abu Musa, Abu Daud said, he was a man among the Tabi'een, not Abu Musa al-Ashari, both of them reporting from Jabir from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Some of them reported Shoba's narration from Yazid bin al-Fakir that he said they completed the other rakah. Similar to that was reported by Simak al-Hanafi from Ibn Umar from the Prophet peace be upon him and similarly Zad bin Thabit reported from the Prophet peace be upon him he said so that was one rakah for the people and two rakahs for the Prophet peace be upon him. It was reported from Bukhar bin al aknas from Mujahid from Ibn Abbas who said, Allah the Exalted has made obligatory upon you, upon the tongue of your Prophet, peace be upon him, four rakahs in residence while not traveling, and two during travel and one during fear. This hadith is graded as sahih or authentic. Chapter on those who said that each group should pray two rakahs with the imam. Al-Hasan narrated from Abu Bakr that he said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, once prayed the prayer of fear for Zuhr. Some of them, the companions, lined up behind him, while others faced the enemy. He led them for two rakahs, then said the taslim. Those who had prayed with him went and stood in the place of the other group, while they, the other group, came and prayed behind him. He led them for two rakahs, then said the taslim. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed four rakahs, while his companions prayed two. And this was the procedure of prayer of fear that Al-Hasan used to hold. This hadith is graded daif, or weak. Abu Daud said, And the same applies for Maghrib. The Imam will pray six rakahs, while the people pray three rakahs. Abu Daud said, Yahya bin Abi Kathir reported that from Abu Salama, from Jabir, from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and similar was said by Suleiman al-Yashkuri from Jabir, from the Prophet, peace be upon him. Comments? 
The foregoing hadiths describe different ways of performing the prayer during a state of fear. This will depend on the circumstances and the level of fear at that time. The imam has a range of options. He may choose any in the light of prevailing circumstances. Chapter on the Prayer of One Who is Seeking the Enemy It was reported from Ibn Abdullah bin Unas from his father who said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent me to Khalid bin Sufyan al-Hudali, and he was in the direction of Urana and Arafat. He, the Prophet, peace be upon him, had said, Go and kill him. When I saw him, it was time for Asr, so I said to myself, I fear that there will be some problem between me and him that will cause me to delay the prayer. So I continued to walk and prayed while walking. I would motion for the prayer in his direction. When I came close to him, he said to me, Who are you? I said, I am a man from the Arabs. I have heard that you are gathering an army to fight against this man, the Prophet, peace be upon him. So I have come to you regarding this. He said, I am indeed doing this. So I walked with him for some time until, when I was able to, I struck him with my sword until he died. This hadith is graded Hassan, or good. Comments 1. If, during a war, the situation becomes very critical and there's no way to perform group prayer in any of the aforementioned modes, Muslim warriors may say their prayers by sign and gesture. 2. One may dodge an enemy in times of war through dissimulation. It is not a form of lying.